What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys haven't seen the last video I uploaded showing the entire beetle build, then you should go check it out now. If you have seen it, then you would have seen how I broke the car on my second drive. So in this video, I'll be going through what I'm gonna do to fix it and improve it. And as always, please give the video a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you guys are interested in purchasing either a t-shirt or a hoodie with this design on it, I'll post a link for those in the description. All right, so what you're looking at here is the Beatles revised chassis. The tubes that are colored blue are part of the existing chassis and all the gray tubes are the new ones. Here's a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, how it looks now versus how it'll look when it's done. Once the chassis changes are out of the way, then I can focus on the new differential. Since a chain driven differential doesn't have a housing to fill with oil like a car does, you have to basically cap it off and fill it with grease to lubricate the internals. I was initially drawn to a product made by a company in the UK called Quaif, which sells a differential specifically designed for motorcycle powered cars. Their differential comes completely sealed with grease fittings to lubricate it. However, I decided to go against it because it was pretty expensive and I would have had to have custom axles made to work with it. So what I chose to do instead is use an NB Miata differential. This allows me to buy off the shelf Miata axles, which paired with Miata hubs, puts the whole setup at the perfect width for the Beetle. So let's take a look at the cap that I've designed for the Miata differential. The one flange on the cap mates up to the flange on the differential and has a seal to ensure the grease doesn't leak out. On the other end of the cap, there's a smaller hole which will be press fit onto the differential and sealed with some RTV. The differential still has to spin like it typically would if it was in a housing, so I'm going to add some bearings on the outsides of the casing. So the next thing we'll take a look at is the sprocket. This needs to be mounted to the flange on the differential. As you can see, it's about an inch and three quarters away from the flange, which seemed like it was gonna be an issue for me at first because I wasn't sure how I was gonna build a mount for the sprocket without getting in the way of whatever's gonna hold the bearing on the differential's case. But I came up with this conical sprocket mount that solved basically all my issues. Once I got that sorted out, I designed the parts that will hold the bearings on the differential casings. These parts are also conical and follow a similar shape as the sprocket mount. I designed them so they'll be pretty heavy duty and will definitely be strong enough to hold the differential in place and not allow it to get sucked towards the engine from the chain when it's under load. I'm lucky enough to be able to use the same Willwood brake setup that I already have and I'm mounting the rotor off of the differential flange. You'll see later on in the video where the caliper will be mounted to. So you might have been wondering what the other flange on the differential cap is for. And as you can see, I'm planning on mounting a ring gear on it for my reverse setup. I had this ring gear mounted on my jack shaft on my previous setup, so fortunately I don't have to remake it. Next, I designed the side plates that the bearing holders are mounted to. These plates basically support the whole differential assembly. I've added three bars between the two plates, which will keep them parallel to each other and keep the whole unit nice and solid. These plates will pivot off of the mounts on the bottom of them and the top will be adjusted using heim joints. The reason I designed the top to be able to adjust is so you can tighten the chain. If you're wondering why they have a single shear mount on the top, it's simply because I already had these adjustable rod assemblies built and mounted to the chassis from the previous setup. So I figured I would just keep them as is and try it out this way. And if it seems like it's gonna flex or maybe not be strong enough to hold the whole assembly from moving under load from the chain, then I can always readdress that in the future. You also may have noticed that the right side plate is a little different than the left one on the front of it. 
And the reason for that is because the starter motor that I use for my reverse gear mounts onto that plate. You can also see that I designed a caliper mount that is going to be welded to the support bars in between the side plates. This just about wraps up the whole differential carrier assembly and now we can move outwards. So what you're seeing here is the Miata axles and hubs that I talked about earlier as well as a pair of Polaris ATV knuckles with the caliper mounts removed. I chose these over the Miata knuckles simply because I thought they would be easier to build control arms for, as well as I thought they were visually more appealing. Here you can see my rough plans for the control arms. I'm not sure if I can add a brace between them close to where they mount to the chassis or not, but this still gives you a rough idea of how I plan to build them. And here they are with the rest of my cantilever suspension set up. I didn't modify the frame rails where the bell cranks mount onto or the center section where the coilovers come together and are mounted, which means I don't have to redo anything other than my push rods and my rear suspension setup will be complete. And that basically concludes the all new improved design of my Beetle's rear end with the chain driven differential. I hope I explained the whole thing well enough for everyone to understand exactly how it's working. If you have any questions about it or any feedback, please comment on the video and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Also, please keep in mind that I am not an engineer by any means, nor am I a professional when it comes to CAD drawing. This is by far the most complex 3D model I've ever done and it's taken me many, many hours to get this far. And obviously there's still some things that need to be addressed like the starter motor hitting that one tube. But anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. I hope you're enjoying seeing the process of how I plan on fixing the Beetle. My next video, I'll be heading down to Monument Motorsports where it's stored and I'll start the disassembly process and possibly start modifying the chassis. So that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.